Hey everybody, we are back with a brand new race for you. Uh, this is from this past weekend. It was, took place in South Beloit, Illinois. Uh, the name of the race was called Super Crit, and it was hosted by the always awesome Burnham Racing Team. Uh, this is the Cat 4 race. I didn't record the Cat 4 or 5 race because I thought this one might be a little bit more uh, fun to watch. Uh, the racing's a little bit more intense for most of it. Uh, this was actually a pretty calm race overall, uh, except for the last few laps. Uh, especially when I compared it to the 4-5s race earlier in the day. The 4-5s race is what you would call a crash fest race. Uh, it's one of those races where every little move that one of the riders makes looks like it's going to result in a crash. We actually were pretty lucky in that there were no crashes in the 4-5s race. However, it was one of those races where it felt like everything that someone did was going to cause a crash. Um, this race had a few less riders in it, uh, 40 instead of 60, so uh, I'm sure that contributed to it, uh, as well as the uh, experience of the riders. I felt a whole lot better in this race than I did in the 4 or 5s race as well. Uh, my legs were much looser. I felt just overall better in this race. Uh, as you guys can see in the lower left hand corner, I also installed a power meter over the weekend. Uh, this was on Friday night before the race. I know it's one of those things that a lot of people say you shouldn't put on new parts or replacement parts before a race, but it turned out just fine. Didn't have any issues with it. The only thing that I had to get used to was the chain ring sizes were different than the ones that I had on there previously. So previously on my bike I had a 5239 standard chain ring sizes. However, the chain rings that were on the power meter cranks were actually a 5442. Uh, the guy that owned them before me was using them for time trials, I believe is what he said. Uh, but I figured they would be okay, especially for this course, because it was held at Blackhawk Farms, which is a motorcycle racetrack. So there aren't really any elevation changes to speak of, uh, and I figured the 54 would be fine. So for this race and the 4.5's race, I was wanting a 54 front chain ring with an 1123 cassette in back. So I had some big old gears on there. Uh, up in front of us now, you can see my buddy Jim in the Apache kit and my other buddy Brian in the uh, middle right there. Two guys I've raced with for a while now. They're awesome guys. Love them both. Uh, but like I was saying, this race is relatively calm. You can actually watch um, the speedometer the power you know my heart rate is pretty low right now compared to where it is normally during a race uh... nobody really wanted to do anything nobody really wanted to work the at least i would say the good half first half of the race was pretty close to this pace the whole time uh... we had a couple guys who wanted to take some flyers off the front they all got caught nobody was sticking out by themselves uh... the wind wasn't too bad except on this back straight here uh, it was just wide open, so you got a pretty big gust of headwind. Um, however, here and on the front straightaway was really where it seemed like the best place to make moves if you were going to make moves through the pack. Um, I really, really enjoyed this race. It was a lot of fun. The course was really fun. It was really cool to race on an actual racetrack instead of, you know, through a uh, a city street. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love racing through the city streets, but this was just a really cool experience that you don't really get all that often. Uh, so, as well in this race, I also had three other teammates. You can actually see them all right here. To my left is Kenan. You saw him in my Linkin Park video. To my right over there is my very good friend, Rick. As He's my teammate as well as my co-worker, and he's an awesome, all-around awesome guy. Uh, and then a little further up front, he kind of moved up through the pack there. You can kind of see him. Uh, that's my buddy Mick. These guys are my teammates. They're awesome. They did some great racing. Uh, this was a really good time. We had a ton of fun in this race. Uh, Mick took second in the four fives, and he did he did really good at all around today. So you see this guy take the flyer off the front. He just launches from pretty pretty far back in the pack, really, and. Um, he doesn't really stay away. I think we catch him at this next corner here. So his attempt wasn't really something that was gonna gonna work at all. Uh, you know, I'm all for taking early flyers if you think you can hold them, but 
we we catch this guy pretty quickly. Uh, and I mean, maybe that's just what he was trying to do, make the race more interesting. Because, like I said, it was a pretty calm race for most of the most of the 45 minutes. Um, we did have a couple of juniors in this race, but uh, they they were able to help hold their own. It was really actually pretty pretty entertaining to see them work harder than some of the other fours in this race. So we pick it up here. Uh, this is uh, I think about halfway through the race, and I decided I wanted to move up. I've been trying to stay towards the front a little bit more in this race just because I knew if I was towards the front I could take the perfect line through these big sweeping corners and carry a lot of speed uh, which was which was the case it was a lot easier uh, to carry a whole bunch of speed through these corners at the front so I didn't have to work through some of the awkward angles that some of the guys were taking their their turns at uh, we're so I mean you can see we picked up the pace here it was uh, much faster than it had been previously uh, but we're still just kind of, uh, you know, nobody really wants to work off the front. Nobody really wants to do much of anything. Everybody's just kind of sitting in, waiting for someone else to do something. So again here, you'll start to see me move up through the pack here. I wanted to use these straights uh, and these little areas where the group seemed to be slowing down to move up through the group. Um, like I said, a lot of people were just kind of s sitting in, not doing much. And I knew I was going to burn a little bit of energy moving through the wind like this to get to the front of the pack, but I figured it was just the best way to do so. So as we come out of this corner here, uh, this is the last corner on the track, a couple guys take a flyer off the front, and I know a couple of these guys are pretty strong, so I decide that uh, why not try and make a move stick with them. I talked about it with a couple of my teammates earlier, and I figure uh, some of these, like I said, some of these guys are pretty strong. So we're moving pretty good here. We're moving, you know, 35. The especially when the pack was sitting at low 20s, this is uh, this is definitely a pace that we could we could stick and stay away from. But uh, you'll see as we come up to this first corner, some of the riders in the in the group start to sit up, and it just kind of seems like nobody really wanted to again put any work in. So we come around this corner, our pace starts to slow down, the group's really unorganized, nobody needs, really wants to get on the front. Uh, this guy in the blue pulls off, uh, we start to talk about rotating, and then it just again kind of falls apart. And I could tell right about here, we weren't really, nothing was really happening, so I just decide to hop in behind this guy in the red and uh, just, just sit in, because I figured we weren't really going to make anything happen. Um, right about here is where the group catches us. So that one didn't really work, and uh, we take a few more laps, and coming out of the corner again, I decide I want to move up. I had fallen back a little bit just because I, I was a little exhausted. So I come up here past my teammate Rick, and I figure I can just sneak in between the cones and the group here. And, I mean, I knew I was pretty close to the cones, but I didn't figure I was actually this close, and you'll see right here on the right the tires fly by. It was real close. I did not think I was that close and uh, would have turned out awful if I had ended up hitting those. But everything turns out okay. I moved up quite a few spots. I'm in, you know, fourth or fifth wheel here. And I'm just, you know, ready to cover anything that happens because at this point in the race, if somebody wants to try and stick something, there's a much likelier chance that it's actually going to stick. A lot of the guys are starting to get fatigued. Uh, again, nobody still wants to work, but there are a few guys trying to make opportunities happen at the front. So I figured I might as well stay towards the front to see if I could join on to one of those things, because I'm certainly not the type of guy who's going to start my own flyer. Um, again, here you'll see I, I fell back a little bit. I, just kind of the nature. I was rubber banding quite a bit. And uh, so I move up through the group. Uh, at this point, couple more guys humped off the front. I see my teammate here and I know that uh, if I can get into this group maybe he can slow down the rest of the peloton a little bit. So I work up to these guys and um, you know us three work up to the other two guys that are up the road here and I see this guy set up so I'm not sure, uh, this is my buddy Brian again, I'm not sure if he was getting uh, lapped or what if he just didn't have it in him but we work up to these guys 
and uh, I thought I really thought that this one could have sticked if we would have if we would have kept hammering. But uh, again, you can see right here, everybody kind of sits up, and I actually get stuck on the front here in a minute. And uh, I saw the group sit up, and I wasn't about to put in any work because uh, we had been caught. I knew we weren't going to stay away. I wasn't going to do any unnecessary uh, efforts. So you'll see me slow down to about. 18 19 miles an hour and that's just because I'm one of those guys where if I have to do work at the front I'm I'm not a happy camper uh, might sound kind of scumbaggy but you know the guy who who does the work at the front is certainly not going to win the race on his own if he's just working off the front the whole time so I s like I said I slowed down here uh, some other guys do end up coming around me right here starting at this corner so, I mean, I did what I could to And so here we start our last lap. You can see we're really moving down the front straight here. Uh, we cross the finish line uh, up the road a little bit. There are two or three guys who, who jumped off the front. So we're kind of trying to catch them as well as, you know, just cranking it up because it's the last lap. I figure I'm in pretty good position here. I uh, maybe need to move up a few spots. So I spot my teammate there and my plan is to move up through through these couple guys, but I get kind of boxed in a little bit. So I hop on these guys wheel here on the right. Some of the riders slow down, so I just uh not the optimal position to to pass on, but I I took the line where I could. Uh so again, I'm just trying to stay towards the front but not at the front obviously because I don't want to be pulling in the wind uh, on the last lap. So you can see there's those three riders up the road. Those are the guys we're trying to catch. Uh, there's a couple guys on the front. Nobody again really wants to work too hard. These two guys are on a team here so I figure I'll let them you know pull us up through the group. And uh, yeah so I mean I'm just sitting in here. We're, we're coming up about halfway through this lap and uh, just again not wanting to do a lot of work trying to conserve some energy uh, trying to stay towards the front I know that I again have my teammate Rick he's somewhere near me I think he's either right behind me or a wheel behind two wheels behind me and uh, I mean you can see we're not moving too quickly but we're, we're moving at a decent click definitely not slouching um, the group starts to sit up a little bit once we do catch these guys which honestly I was a little okay with because I wanted to catch my breath. Um, I figured I could move in through the left here after we caught these guys. I figured they might uh, just keep pulling, but obviously I was wrong. I move up to my buddy Jim here who was in that break and uh, I kind of gave him a couple words of encouragement and uh, he just, he, he, he didn't really do much. You can see that guy kind of go off course there for a minute. I don't really know why he went off into the grass, but he stayed up, no worries. Coming to these last few corners, everybody got super, super anxious, and actually, uh, I could tell that everybody was getting a little squirrely. Uh, th at this this corner is where I could kind of tell that people weren't weren't really uh, thinking straight, especially because right here the whole group just kind of grabs brakes and we slow down for no reason. Um, and then coming into this corner, everybody got super, super aggressive. I started to try to move up here. I move over to this guy in the red, on his right. And uh, this guy starts to bump me, and you'll see what happens. He actually loses his control. I think he banged that guy, that tower racing guy's wheel, and he actually goes down. And somebody else went down with him. Um, after I got bumped for the second weekend in a row, I was a little spooked. Uh, I still wanted to move up though, so I was trying to move up semi-conservatively. I didn't want to get too aggressive, uh, just because. I, I really didn't want to crash, especially, you know, the last corner of the last lap of my second race of the day. Just kind of wanted to get home at this point. I do see my teammate Rick up there. Uh, I Right here, I kind of knew I was too far back, so I just, you know, I put my I put the effort in because why not? And I, I do end up passing a couple of these guys. But towards the end of the finish line, I just kind of sat up because I knew I wasn't getting a podium and, you know, at that point it's really just about finishing the race so uh, you'll kind of see me sit up right about here and you know I figured why put in any extra effort just kind of finish the race safely smartly and that's it I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time